Well, hello, it's Colin. Hey, Colin Baptiste here from Grade A Computer Science. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the factors, the factors affecting CPU performance. So if you've been asking, what are the factors affecting CPU performance? You're going to find out right here. Okay. Well, the factors that affect CPU performance, there are six of them, and they are multiple cores, cache memory, clock speed, word length, address bus, bus width, put my teeth in, address bus, bus width, and the data bus width. So there are six factors there that you want to consider. Okay, let's have a look at them. All right, so first of all, we've got multiple cores. Now, you can see from what I've written there, the normally, the Newman method, uh, instructions are normally fetched and executed one at, and at a time. Now, uh, modern computers will normally utilize the Newman method. However, today, we now have dual core and quad core computers very fast comp computers and each core has its own fetch and execute cycle which means that uh, the CPU can be running two or four times faster that's pretty good now the actual speed of the software the, sorry the actual speed of the processor is very much dependent on the software so for instance a word processor won't necessarily take advantage of the quad core uh, processor but guess what will games and videos games and video software needs to have the fantastic speed of these quad core the dual core and the quad core computers and they will be built the software will be built to take advantage of those processors next factor clock speed clock speed is another factor so the pro the processor has to have a pulse uh, an electrical pulse uh, which stimulates the electrical circuits and to get the processor working now just so you know one clock cycle is equal to one hertz so normally in a in a uh, personal computer the clock cycles are in gigahertz so they they are actually very very fast so a pc clock speed is in the order of gigahertz typical speeds are two to four gigahertz so the faster the clock the faster the instructions can be dealt with and processed so that's clock speed then we've got something called cache memory now this is a small amount of high performance ram it's actually built into the processor it's only a small amount built into the processor and it stores data that's being repeatedly used so repeatedly used data without requesting from system memory so it doesn't need to get the information from system memory normally in the fetch execute cycle the CPU will send uh, an address to, to fetch the information from the memory but with the cache memory it doesn't need to do that so obviously it's saving time and of course this is critical to video editing games and 3d applications because of the speed that's uh, the benefit of the speed of having a cache on the CPU so that's cache memory then we've got word length so the word length of a CPU and that's really the number of bits that a CPU can process simultaneously all at one go so for instance a 32-bit processor is faster than a 16-bit processor because you're processing 32 bits simultaneous, simultaneously typically a computer system word, word will be um, 32 or 64 bits. A PC is typically 64 bits. And here in this little chart here, you can see that we've got 
CPUs and their clock speeds and the worth of it. Let me just highlight these for you. Here we have the CPU and we've got the, the different types of CPU. These are very early CPUs. Uh, the 8088, the 286, 386, 486. You've got the Pentium Pro right up to the Pentium 4. Pentium 4, 1.5 gigahertz and uh, 64 bits wide. Okay. And, but of course, the, the Pentium 4 is now 1.5 up to 3.2 gigahertz. Now, I hope you like what I'm putting out here for you. This is really to help you with your um, computer science. If you do like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's going to encourage me to put more videos out there for you to help you with you passing computer science. Now, the width of the address bus determines the maximum number of address locations. So, for instance, as I've said here, the maximum, if we had 8 bits, then we can have, if we've got 8 bits, then we can have or, or ones, 8 ones here, which means you've got 256 addresses that are addressable. Links to the data that's, uh, that's within the memory. And lastly, we've got the data bus width. The data bus width, this is the number of bits that can be transferred simultaneously. And you can see here on the diagram here, we've got the external data bus and how the external data bus is connected to the processor. The processor will t uh, take data. Data will tra be transmitted to and from these uh, devices. In actual fact, the processor puts out uh, data yes, onto the data bus. And you can see here the clock. There's a small clock here. So this is obviously an older uh, processor. So there we have it. Six CPU factors. Multiple cores, cache memory, clock speed, word length, address bus, bus and the data bus. Those are your, your six CPU performance factors. So, this is Colin Baptiste from Grade A Computer Science. If you like what you saw, have a look at some of the other videos that I've got on, uh, on the channel. Subscribe, like it, and give us a comment. I'd love to hear your comments. Your feedback is very important to me because it means that I know um, what I need to put out for you. I'm really trying to put out as much value as I can for you guys so it can help you to pass your computer science classes wherever you're taking them in the world. You've got my videos, my email address questions and Colin at Grade A Computer Science. This is Colin Baptiste from Grade A Computer Science saying have fun. <laughs>